All righty. Well, good morning, everybody. We are super happy to have you here for the last of our Be Informed webinars of 2020. Katie, can you believe it's the last one of 2020? You know, I can't believe it, but I am quite excited about it. <laughs> right. We're all ready for the next year. It's true. And you'll notice Katie and I are not in the same room today, but don't worry. We'll still have our typical banter that I know you've all come to know and love. Uh, but we're just really happy to have you guys join us. And if you are joining us live, a couple of housekeeping items. First, don't forget, we can't see you or hear you, but you are more than welcome to ask questions throughout the presentation using our Q&A box feature. We'll be monitoring that. We can interject with questions during our presentation. We definitely wanna make this as interactive as we can under the circumstances. The second is that if you're joining us on our recording, don't worry about questions you might have because you can always reach us out to us and ask them after the fact. And we'll definitely have some more resources for you if you need them. So with that, happy to get started on today's webinar. So what are we talking about today, Katie? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about sustainability in agriculture and what that really means, because I think that word sustainability means uh, many different things to different people. And so I think we will first get us on the same page with what we are talking about in forms of sustainability and what that means in agriculture. And then I am so excited for our guest presenter that we have today, um, who we will introduce you to in just a couple moments. I gotta say, I'm pretty excited too. Um, it's it's some a company near and dear to my heart, and one of my favorite people at that company. So, but before we get started, sustainable agriculture, we want to sort of set the framework for what we're talking about when we use that word, right, Katie? It's it's a bit of a buzzword. I'm sure we've all heard it before, used in different contexts. But when we say it, this is what we're talking about: three things. We're talking about agriculture that focuses on people, planet, and profit. It seeks to sustain farmers, resources, and communities by promoting farming practice and methods that are profitable, right? So that the company's still making money. They're environmentally sound so that that's gonna work for generations to come and care for the resources that we have. And it's good for the communities that we're in. It's you know producing something that we need and it's treating people well, it's treating employees well, it's treating customers well. It's that triple bottom line of what we're looking at. And I've got to say that I don't think there's any company that understands that concept of sustainable agriculture better than who we're going to hear from today. And that's Duncan Family Farms. Uh, today, we're going to talk to Patty Emmert. She's the Community Relations and Marketing Manager for Duncan's. She's going to tell us more about what they grow and what they do and sort of what their definition and what their look at sustainability is. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Patty uh, so that she can tell us more. Welcome, Patty. Thanks, Katie and Chelsea. We're excited to be here. Um, we love talking about uh, the farm and what we do. We're um, super passionate about it and um, and always enjoy like interacting with Farm Bureau and participating with you guys. You guys are always great and we just really appreciate the support that you um, provide to all of our producers and growers across the state of Arizona. So thank you guys. Um, Let's, you know, I think what I'll do is I'll just roll, I'll just roll right into our presentation. So let me pull that up for you real quick. And let's see here. I think, are we, let's see. Ah, wrong one. Hold on. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. Let's start here. So I, I think what I'd like to do is just um, start out with giving you a quick overview of Duncan Family Farms and who we are, kind of where we started from. And, and then, you know, as we go through the presentation, you'll kind of go along the journey as far as where we stand today and, and how we're looking to the future in front of us. But when we started farming, Arnett and Kathleen, Arnett himself is a fourth generation uh, Arizona farmer. And when they started farming back um, their own operations back in like the 80s, they ended up combining their passions. So it was Arnett with uh, with farming and then Kathleen with education. And one of the things that they really, you know, they were witnessing was the fact that people were just getting re really disconnected with their where their food was coming from. 
um, you know, farms weren't really in the forefront of communities anymore. And so what they wanted to do is they really wanted to bring that back. They wanted to uh, educate people about where their food comes from. They wanted to educate them about the value of farms in communities. And so they had an agritourism as, uh, it was an operation, but it was all focused around ed education. And we did that through about 2001. And then just through some unfortunate events, we had to shut that portion of our farm down. But you know what, that's, you know, that's, that's how things go. And you either look at a door that's shut behind you or you find a new one and open it up. And, and that's what we've done. And so we've gone from this really small farm that was focused on education now to one of the largest uh, uh, organic growers in the country that is producing baby tenderleaf items. So in this picture, what you're seeing here is all of the, the components that we grow for salad blends. So when you're in the grocery store and you see the the clamshells and the bags of salad blends we're growing all of the components that go into that and depending upon the time of year we're one of the largest producers of, of those types of items um, and I have our our mission statement up here because one of the things that that I really that's cool to me about our mission statement is this mission statement was created by Kathleen and Arnett back when we were a very small farm and open to the public. And that mission statement has never changed. It has guided us to this day, even though we're vastly different today than we were when we started out, it's still the same mission statement. So it, it really is about producing clean, healthy, life-giving food and making sure that we are committed to making a strong contribution to an improved environment and giving back to our community. So in that mission statement, it, it very clearly um, depicts a triple bottom line. We're talking about people, planet, and profit here. So um, again, we're focused on that. We are um, a 100% certified organic farm. Um, even though we are all organic, we certainly believe that there are, we need all types of farming. So we do not um, think that organic is is the the be all end all. We believe that there is responsible ways to grow conventionally, just as there is responsible ways to grow organically. And on the flip side, there's irresponsible ways to grow both of those platforms. So again, we do not vilify any type of farming. It's just we've chosen to go this route. We always tell Arnick he's a dirt nerd, so. He really is all about the soil and and um, and focusing on that. So again, kind of, I think that's really what got him into the organic production model. Um, but we always jokingly refer to him as a dirt nerd. So on this, um, the next slide, we you know we also have not just a mission statement, but we have values too that um, really guide who we are as a team. And um, and sets the stage on how we work together. So, our, you know, as I indicated, our operations are large, and our farms are spread out. We're in Arizona, we're in California, we're in Oregon, and then we've got some ground in upstate New York as well. So we're spread out. So anything that we can do to keep us all like working together and rowing in the same direction is a good thing, and our values do that. And the first, the very first priority in anything that we do always involves safety. So it's it's not just safety about producing food and making sure that that food is healthy and wholesome, but it's also and, and equally important is safety for our farm workers. So we really focus on safety above and beyond everything else. And then everything else from that falls in place, you know, through excellence, integrity, community, team and respect. And on the next slide, I've got I've got a presentation. So there's a couple of videos that I've got sprinkled in this for you to see. And so this next video really gives you an idea of who we are as a company. And, and it gives you a look inside a little bit of how we um, produce some of our product. But I like to start off with that because it just sets the stage for you getting a look at, again, who we are and, and how we operate as a company. So let's roll with this. Every day I come to work, I know that I'm living a mission statement and a values. A lot of companies, it's something that's written up on a wall and you walk past it every day. And other than that, you don't really see it. We see it lived out every day in everything that we do. 
Excellence is our passion. The people are what makes Duncan Family Farm such an amazing place to work. You know, there's a lot of great aspects about it, but the thing that I look forward to when I get up every morning is coming to work with all these amazing people that work here. I love what I do. I mean, it's a different thing every single day. New challenges, I like facing those challenges from prepping the ground, from planting all the way to you harvest. It's just a great feeling knowing what's in that bag at the store might be something you grew. Integridad, hacemos lo que es correcto. Food safety and farm safety are ingrained in our everyday culture. We don't make any decisions on the farm without considering both of those things. Yo pienso que la compañía tiene uno de los estándares uh, más altos en seguridad, igualmente para el producto que ellos siembran y cosechan. The way I think about it as a father and a family man is this product that we're harvesting, when I take it home and put it on my table to feed my children, everybody thinks about it in every decision they make. It's just, it's part of the job. Community, we care about our people and our environment. They give you the opportunity to grow. They'll train you, they'll help you out any way they can, and things other companies won't do. We have great programs for mentorship, tuition reimbursement, English and Spanish classes. There's even GED classes. There's no place like this, like Duncan Family Farms, as far as being able to professionally develop and uh, as far as having your ideas heard, no matter what level of the business you're at. Estoy aquí porque, pues porque aquí, aparte de que valoran mucho a uno, les enseñan a aprender más. We don't just grow produce that's out in our fields, we grow people, and you're given opportunities to move up within the company. Equipo, trabajamos juntos y nunca separados. Knowing if you need help, everyone's here for you. Someone needs help, you're there for them. Pues, aquí pues, por varias razones, aquí te dan la oportunidad de crecer, de aprender varias cosas. Y pues, para empezar, pues, me gusta el trabajo. Every day you come to work is a good day when you're working with great people. Respect. We value all of our relationships. Everybody's opinions and ideas are respected. I've been in agriculture my entire life, and that is so vastly different from a more traditional type farm. Welcome to Duncan Family Farms. I'm Barna Duncan, and really I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all for working here. We hope to really earn your trust and make this a place where it's not just a place where you have to come to work. You enjoy coming here as I do every day. I look forward to seeing more of you here. And once again, welcome. Uh, okay. So are you, um, can you see me now? Is it, are we on that next slide? Yep, you're good. Okay. Um, all right. So. That is like one of my favorite videos because it really does show who we are and it gives you just a, at least an overview of, of our values and the culture in which we um, do business and farm. So the next section, I want to talk a little bit about how we grow. And um, and we, you know, as I mentioned, we are organic farmers, so we, you know, we are 100% organic. Focus on that. But as I said, we believe that all types of farming are, you know, we need a variety of it to grow food. We don't just want to focus on one aspect of it. Sustainable farming for us is um, is something that we've always done. We've always focused on sustainability in our agronomic practices. And but we haven't really had a program where um, where we have formalized sustainability in looking at it holistically across the farm. So we just launched this about a year ago. And what we're doing is we are taking different aspects of the farm. So, for example, um, we're working right now on water use efficiency. We've always worked on water use efficiency. We've, you know, we've always been mindful of that, but we really haven't formally put a program around measuring it. And when you don't measure something, it's difficult to really look at how you can improve. So part of implementing this really was to be able to bring more transparency to the practices that we're doing. Um, finding areas where we're doing something really well, and then more importantly, finding those areas where we can improve and implement practices to improve what it is that we're doing. 
The other important aspect of this is uh, is also the fact that we have got multiple operations in different states. It's important for us to be able to take this information and make sure that our other our other operations are also implementing these things. So again, when we're measuring and documenting, it really helps that pro that process be more efficient. The other aspect of sustainability that we're working on is a zero waste program. So that is going to begin in our new offices. We have we just built new offices that we moved into. So we're going to look at certifying that um, that facility as zero waste, and then we will start looking at how we can spread that out across our farm and into other locations. And then the third area that we're working on is we're working on a sustainably grown certification. And that we're, we are expecting to have completed by fall of 2021. So we'll start audits here in, in our Goodyear operations in um, February. And then we will have our other operations audited during the summer months when we're in season there and growing product. Um, Patty, and then, who, Patty who does the sustainable certifications? Um, that's SCS. Um, um, oh my gosh. No, wait, hold on. Let me think about this. It, it's SCS, does it? Let me let me confirm that. And I and, and I hate this because I always lose words, but um it's this it's the we have we use them for our um our oh my gosh, they do our food safety audits and um and our global gap for us as well, and which is really nice because what they with doing that we can combine a lot of the practices that were already being audited for for global gap and um, and food safety and roll that into our sustainably grown certification because these audits are pretty intensive. So any way that you can marry those together is a huge help. So let's see, next slide. Um, I talked a little bit about the fact that we're in multiple states. Uh, so the geographic diversity really allows us to have year round supply. Up until it was about eight, nine years ago was when we um, went into year round production. So up until then we were only growing in good year and we were only growing during the winter months and then during the summer months, and we still do this during the summer months, our, we rest our ground, we're cover cropping, we are, um, we're applying compost and we're you know, getting all of the ground ready to come back in again during the winter months and, and um, grow edible crops. So the geographic diversity, part of the strategy for this for us is twofold. One, it was allowing us to get closer to our customers, some of our customers, at least for a portion of the year when we're, um, especially with our, our operations on the East Coast. So we really wanted to start diversifying these areas to be able to have regional growing operations to help with um, delivering product to some of these areas. And probably, you know, the, the biggest driving factor was a offering year round supply to our customers, as well as being in different areas than other people growing similar product because our customers are not only just buying product from us, but they, you know, they've got multiple growers that they contract with. And um, and so this allows us to be able to if there's air, if there's issues in some areas, then we're not getting tagged. If there's issues with us, then, you know, these other areas, chances are 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 OK because they're not in the same location. Um, and then the um, the other thing that I should mention, too, is all of our product is contracted. So this is this is pretty important because it's a little different than people who are growing for market and um, and have to you know kind of forecast and guesstimate how much product to grow. Our customers tell us pre-season exactly how much they need, and then we create a planting schedule each week. And we're you know everything that we're planting is pre-sold before we put it in the ground. So that um, that allows us to um, work with our team, put the planting schedules together, 
these crops are pretty quick growing. They, from planting to harvest, it is typically about anywhere from like 23, 24 days in the warmer part of the season up to about 40 to 42 days in the colder part of the season. So these crops again are growing very quickly. Um, so we're always, you know, looking at, at what's going on in the market. You know, there's there's constant communication with our customers, and if we need to pivot, if we need to, you know, increase or decrease a little bit, you have the opportunity to do that because the crops are so quick growing. So you're you're hopping a lot during during this. And just to give you a little bit of an idea of, of kind of the size of the operation. During the winter months is where we're growing most of the product and we are typically shipping about one to 1.3 million pounds of baby tender leaf a week. So if you if you think about when you buy a bag of lettuce in the in the grocery store, the blends, those are typically about six to eight ounces. So that's a lot of bags of lettuce. Uh, there's other products that we grow as well besides the baby tender greens. Um, we do grow broccoli, cauliflower, romaine, kale. Um, we do beets and carrots. And then we also have a uh, culinary herb program, which is year round here in Goodyear. So right now we're only growing the herbs in our Arizona location. And, um, and that we're hoping to bring out into a Duncan Family Farms brand probably within the next six months as is what we're we're working on at this point. All of our product right now goes out underneath our customers brands and labels so you don't see Duncan Family Farms brand on the shelf right now. That's something that we're we're going to be bringing back. We did have a program before that was Duncan Family Farms branded product. But with the rate of growth that we um, that we were were experiencing, along with opening up these new locations in different in different states, it was a lot of work. So we really scaled back our portfolio of products focused on our core product, which is the baby tender leaf, and then got these other locations in process control and now we're looking at bringing a DFF branded line back into the marketplace and that's probably 12 to 24 months out on on that particular project. So um, vertical integration, one of the things that um, that we do at Duncan is you know we don't we aren't growing our own seed but we do take everything from from planting all all the way through delivery, we own that entire process. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One is it allows us to um, be more efficient and also have greater control. And it's a cost saving measure as well for us. Um, one of the most important things, you know, I mean, it, everything is important from, you know, prepping the ground, making sure that, you know, you, you've got healthy soil, um, to grow these plants and then and then you know planting it, growing it, harvesting it. But one of the big things is post harvest handling because if you do everything perfect up to post harvest handling and the post harvest part of it is not handled well, then everything goes down the drain. So a big reason we like to control that process is to make sure that our product reaches our customers in the best possible condition. So we have when we are growing the product and we're out harvesting that product is harvested it comes into our cooler area and what you're seeing here these are the the containers that our products harvested into you'll notice that these are not cartons they're plastic rpcs so this is another sustainable component of our process where we're not going into cartons we're utilizing reusable rpcs so these rpcs get filled they um, they come into our cooler and then this goes into a vacuum tube which is going to bring the temperature of the field heat out bring that temperature down so in a sense what you're doing is you're you are basically kind of putting it to sleep so that the product stops respirating because as it as it respirates then that is what causes it to break down so and when it heats up it's going to respirate more so you're trying to slow that process down in order to have 
quality and shelf life for your product. So it goes through all of that and then it gets loaded onto a truck. And again, we are handling our own trucking as well. And we deliver that to our customers. And then our customers take over from there. They're blending, they're processing, packaging, and then marketing and selling that product on their end. Um, one of the things that I didn't really touch into, and I think it's um, I think it's important, is the composting operation. This is a huge part of our um, of our organic program as well as sustainability. So, in the in all the areas that we farm in, we partner with um, it will partner with dairies will partner with um, municipalities that have green belt areas. We've got a lot of, of golf courses here in Arizona, so we partner with companies that can bring all of that green waste in and the manure in to us, and then we divert that from landfills and we create compost that then goes in to um, build up our soils. Part of the reason why we create our own compost as opposed to buying it is again, we have more control over that process and we tend to cure our compost a lot longer than um, than is required. So, you know, you you have a certain amount of um, there's a there's a time frame of where you have to have that compost heated up and I never can remember this and I don't know why, but um, yeah, and maybe Katie, you or, or Chelsea um, know that, but you heat it up and then it has to be, the soil has to be turned and um, and it has to stay at a certain temp for a certain number of days to be considered cured as compost. And that, you know, depending upon where you're at, it can take, you know, it can take a few weeks or it could take a month or two. We end up typically, um, doing our compost for probably about nine months. And we do that because we want every single solitary thing in that windrow broken down to where you just have dirt sitting there, the compost, no sticks, nothing is, is left in there. It's completely broken down. And the reason we do that, if you remember, I talked about our really short growing cycles. So you want when that when you plant those seeds, what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything is going to to the health and wellness of that plant growing as strong as it possibly can. Because even though we do spray um, in organic farming, we we don't have um, the diversity of of sprays that you use in conventional products. So we we're we have to stay within just using organic compounds. So we're using things like soaps and those types of things that will get on and um and basically I mean you're you're basically trying to eliminate pests and and there's a number of different methods and I'm trying to I'm trying to like remember Oh gosh, Arnett, there was one that Arnett talked about and I can't remember what it is right now, but it, at any rate, so we're what we're doing is we're trying to, just like a person who eats healthy exercises is able to ward off colds and getting sick um, more better than somebody who doesn't take care of themselves, same thing with plants. So you wanna try to give everything to the life of that plant so that it can ward off pest and disease and grow into a healthy plant. We also can't afford to have stuff breaking down in the soil because that plant's growth cycle is so short. We need to have everything going to support that plant for that short um, for that short growing cycle. So the this next um, the next video that I have for you is going to give you an overview. One of the things that we that we do in conjunction with um, our community outreach is we have an internship program. And our internship program is, is for high school as well as college students. It is a paid internship program. And obviously through COVID right now, that's it's it is um, suspended until we get through COVID, but it will hopefully be back online come fall of 21. And what this video will do is it will just give you an overview of our internship program and some of the opportunities that are that are there with that. So we'll start this.
Welcome. Welcome to the internship program at Duncan Family Farms. We hope you are able to join us in a great experience seeing all the different career opportunities that agriculture has to offer. At Duncan Family Farms, you can invest yourself in everything from supply chain management to data analytics to production, food safety, and everything in between. There are a variety of opportunities that you are going to be able to hear about here in just a few moments. We hope you can join us at Duncan Family Farms. I decided to go through an internship program so that I could gain real world and meaningful experience. And I found that Duncan Family Farms provided me with opportunities in both the sides of agriculture and business. I really had no idea about what it took to produce a safe, quality, and clean product for consumption. Being able to go through this internship really taught me that. Intern can expect to learn about plant nutrition. And within that, we take a lot of soil samples on the farm to make sure we're applying the right amount of fertilizers and nutrition that the plant might need. Going into the internship, I definitely expected it to be a lot of hands-on learning, um, a lot of really being in the fields and getting dirty and just um, understanding where my food comes from. It has by far exceeded my expectations. This program is going to help uh, Duncan Family Farms and the community and the participants because it's going to hopefully open up their eyes to what agriculture really is like. They're surprised that, you know, I guess farming is not what they thought it was. College educated individual could come into agriculture and, and make a good living. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of the times when I think of agriculture, I, I do think of, you know, the the man farming out there with a with a shovel and seeds, but I started to realize that as soon as I came in, there was a lot more to it than just that. We utilize the farm management software on the farm called Trimble. It's some of the technology that we brought onto the farm that really helps us be more efficient in our processes. So what we do is we record anything from planting to harvest on this software and it allows all departments to be able to see it. Through the internship program, the work you do does matter and you begin to realize that the work that you're putting in affects the business and affects you as well. The internship program really helps to reinvigorate our purpose and gives us a new perspective on what we do every day. Personally, I thought that this experience was one of a kind. I can say that every single day that I've come into this internship, I've learned something or I've met someone that I will never forget. I would encourage everyone to apply for this internship, whether you want to go in the ag career field or not. It's just an extremely awesome experience to be a part of. It's more than just planting a seed and watching it grow and giving it a little bit of water. It's human resources. It's being able to connect with your community, which is more than what uh, most people think. Here at Duncan Family Farms, we really enjoy working with interns for a number of reasons. Personally, I enjoy working with the interns because it's an opportunity for me to work with talented people who are inspiring regardless of their age. As an industry, I think it's really important that agriculture start to focus on attracting young talent into the agricultural industry because we need to refill the ranks in a hurry. Consider Duncan Family Farms, consider agriculture, and looking forward to meeting you. Okay, so um, the internship program, we are super, super excited about that. And I, and I think it's a great opportunity to come into an ag operation and get exposed to all different types of things that it takes to run a farm. So like like people said, there are when you come in and do it, you're you're actually rotating through all of the different departments within the farm. So you get an overview of it. And it isn't just about, you know, growing the product out in the field. There's all these other things that are going on in the background that support that and make that run, like finance, like IT and um, and our HR department, and there's so there's a lot more supply chain. There's a lot more to it than just um, getting out in the farm and and planting and growing product. So we're real excited about that. And, and if anybody's interested in our internship program, you can always find out information on our website at www.duncanfamilyfarms.com, and then there is a 
Um, there's a button at the top right, and I believe it's careers, and that drops down, and then there is information on the internship program. And again, I don't think that that's going to start up until um, until probably the fall of 2021 due to COVID, but you can stay, you can just stay um, connected through the website and see when that's coming back up. Um, and I think, you know, at, at, at this point, what I'd like to do is just, you know, again, thank you guys for allowing us to give you a tour of Duncan and an overview of what we do. And I'd like to just open it up to questions and see if there's any, any questions that you have for me that I can answer for you. Well, Patty, thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. And it's so interesting to learn about what Duncan does and how they do it. And my first question for you is, does the internship program take 30 year olds? Like, is is that a thing? <laughs> can I can I get in on that? Because it sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, don't, I don't think oh, I'm like trying to escape out of this. Am I? It's okay. We're we're just seeing you now, so. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Um. So you know what we um. I think at this point, our main objective with that internship program is, and, and in all seriousness, is to really expose people because I think you know you all know we need to we need to encourage more people to get involved in ag. We ag is is got an aging workforce and. We need to encourage people to get into it. It's a great business to be in. And I mean, I I was not involved in ag until I started with Duncan Family Farms and I've been with them for 10 and a half years. I've always been involved in food, but I was always on the cooking side of it. And then also working in, you know, local food supply systems and that type of of um, aspect of things, but not, you know, formally in ag. And when I came to work for Duncan, I've never looked back. I mean, it's it's just, it's challenging. It's always changing. You never get bored. It's, you know, people are super passionate about, about it that are in it. So it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And Patty, on that note, when you talk about the opportunities that are available, one through the internship program, how many interns in a non-COVID year, of course, um, do you bring on through that program? So we this program was just launched last year prior to COVID, and we started out with eight interns that we um, we accepted and ran through because it was our first launch into it. So we wanted to make sure that we were providing a meaningful experience and kind of working through the kinks. So we started with eight and I don't know, you know, what our cap is gonna be. I would imagine that probably like eight to 12 is probably gonna be like the max that we would do just, just so that we can make sure that we're providing a meaningful experience and, and, um, and spending time with them. So when you get a large group all at once, it's hard to do that. Now, I know in the beginning you were talking about how large Duncan is, Duncan Family Farms and, and all of the different departments and opportunities. How many employees does Duncan Family Farms have? So we vacillate because our, our employees are a combination of full-time, part-time, um, seasonal contract labor, as well as H-2A labor. And so I would say, depending upon the season, we can vacillate between about 350 to 550 employees. So going back to kind of this idea of sustainability, and, and you're talking about the triple bottom line, when you talk to people and you, you talk about Duncan's commitment to sustainability, what do you think is the biggest misconception when you say that word or when you use that word? What do people think it means versus what Duncan's believes it means? Wow. Um, I think, you know, sometimes people don't realize when you do talk about sustainability that it, it really is equal attention to people, planet, and profit. It's not just about planet. I think people have a tendency to think, all right, if you're being sustainable, you know, you're really focusing on the planet component of sustainability. But we, you know, there's 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 nothing wrong with being profitable. You have to be profitable to stay in business. But if you focus on profitability at the expense of planet and community, then you're out of balance. 
if you focus on community and you're not and, and you're not focusing on profit or planet, again, you're out of balance. So to mm -hmm. me, that that misconception is really understanding the importance of being in balance with all three of those. And they're all of equal importance. That's awesome. <laughs> Great answer. Well, Katie, do you see any more questions from the chat box? Um, one of them um, back on maybe the second slide when you were talking about crops um, and the seasons when most of your tender leaves come and then you said in the off season you plant some cover crops to help prepare the soil um, and get the soil ready for the next planting season. What are some of those crops that you turn to that are able to help with preparing um, or rehabilitating your soil for that next growing season? So it depends upon location. Um, for Arizona, we use a lot, most of our cover cropping is done with Sudan grass. And, and we do that for a couple of reasons um, here that it is, it grows well in the summertime because our cover cropping is done in the summertime. So you have to do something that tolerates heat. Um, it also grows very dense, so it helps to choke out weed growth, and so it's mitigating weeds. But probably two of the most important things is, is it has a very um, long root system, so it, it can get down into the soil and mine that nitrogen and bring it back up. That, so from when we have been growing crops during the winter time and we're doing all of our irrigation, that can leach out. And again, you know, I talked about the aspect of the of how these are baby items. So the the spinach, all the components are baby greens and lettuces. So their root systems are very shallow. So you need to have everything available pretty close up to the surface of that soil for that for the growth of that plant. So the the Sudan grass does a great job with that, as well as um, when we mow that down and turn it into the soil, it breaks down quickly. So again, when we come in in the fall and we're planting, that product is still not breaking down. We we definitely went through some trial and error when we moved over to California because we carried that practice with us and implemented Sudan grass, but you again, we're doing our cover cropping in the winter months over there. So you're dealing with cooler temperatures and we found that the Sudan grass wasn't breaking down quick enough and it was causing issues when we would come back in in the summertime. So they're doing things like mustards and those types of things in, um, in California as opposed to the Sudan grass. And same with Oregon, Oregon's very similar. And I think that's a great example of how um, our farmers and our producers across the country have to do what works for them when it comes to sustainability. There is no picture that carries through for everyone and that it's constantly changing as you learn things as you move yep. from location to location. So I think that's important for people to remember. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I don't see any more questions. How about you, Chelsea? Nope, I've got none on this side either. Well, Miss Patty, thank you so much for your time. We very much appreciate you um, and Duncan Family Farms and you sharing their story of sustainability and also commitment to those three Ps. We love the alliteration, right? Um, but uh, Chelsea is actually gonna throw up another slide on there because we do have some programs and some opportunities for you guys to continue to learn about a little bit more about sustainability and all of the decisions and, and factors that come into play with our farmers and our producers when it comes to this topic. So if you are in a school classroom environment, um, you can go on to Journey 2050. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to use some inquiry-based learning um, and approaches to make decisions and then adjust those decisions or modify those decisions based on how that impacts the society or people, uh, the environment, the planet, and of course the profit as well. And it lets you take those sustainability sort of outline rules, practices, and implement them not only here in the United States, but other countries to see how different 
um, agriculture and farming is here in the U.S. versus place um, places like Africa um, and, and other areas. So Journey 2050 is a great interactive um, app game that you can play as a class in the classroom for some challenges. If you want something that's for your own time outside of the classroom and maybe it's on your phone, um, you would want to hit up the Farmers 2050 page. And that's going to be very similar to the Journey 2050 with a little bit of a twist. Um, and what I like about the Farmers 2050 page, similar to Farmville, you get to take the role of being a farmer and you get to plant and you get to make the decisions, but very different from Farmville, it is based in reality. So you actually do have to look at some seasons and some inputs and you can't just check in every once in a while and sprinkle some water and magic happens. Um, and so that's something that I really do like about this platform in Farmers 2050. So Journey 2050 and Farmers 2050 are both free apps um, made available uh, to you. So definitely take advantage of that. Maybe the teachers out there will give some extra credit for some, some good scores on these apps. Uh, as you continue to learn about sustainability and everything that goes into it. All right. Well, Katie, do we have anything else for our audience before uh, we say goodbye to them and to Patty? I think that's it. I just want to say um, happy holidays to everyone. Let's move into 2021. We will see you again in January uh, where we will talk a little bit more about where Arizona water comes from. That's right. So, well, thanks everybody for joining us. Patty, we can't thank you enough for spending your morning with us as well and telling us more about the Duncan story and what sustainable agriculture means to them. Cool, thank you. And, I, and I'm putting a note in right now for the um, certifying agency as well. It oh, was okay. SCS, so I was having a brain cramp. So it is SCS Global Services that does the, um, the sustainably grown certification. Awesome. Well, we'll be on the lookout for more information about that too, uh, hopefully later this year. Awesome. Right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Patty. Thanks, thank Katie. you. Bye. Bye.